this video is going to be about the Young Turks and how they covered this case with uh, George Zimmerman and uh, Trevon Martin. This particular clip that I'm about ready to discuss comes from March, middle of March. The, this was posted on YouTube March 14th by the Young Turks. So I'm going to go ahead and play some of it and then discuss it with you. We have some updates on the Trayvon Martin story. And, you know, yesterday when we covered this story, we were very, very suspicious and skeptical of the police department investigating the case because it didn't seem like they were alarmed by the fact that a 17-year-old boy who weighs 140 pounds was shot and killed by someone who's 26 years old or 28 years old. There are conflicting reports. So they're very concerned that right now what they're saying is their main concern is that this little little boy little tiny itty bitty baby boy was was shot by this big mean man and that the police didn't even care they, they didn't they didn't even care they didn't really investigate it properly at least that's the way it sounds here so let's continue uh, and was armed okay shot in the chest so um now it turns out that more witnesses are talking to ABC News and to other media outlets and they are confirming that they are also skeptical of the way the police have handled the situation thus far. So I'll give you some exact examples. After the shooting, a source inside the police department told ABC News that a narcotics detective and not a homicide detective first approached Zimmerman. All right, so the source inside the police department told ABC News that a narcotics detective not a homicide detective first approached Zimmerman. Does that mean that the narcotics detective interviewed him or spent, you know, spent time making uh, reports? It doesn't say that here. It says that narcotics detective first approached him. Does that sounds to me like he walked up to him? He might have talked to him about it a little bit. But even if it was a narcotics detective, does that mean that uh, he doesn't? He can't get to the truth because it's a, a homicide case. And does that mean that only he was going to talk to Zimmerman, that uh, the homicide detective wasn't eventually going to get to it? We don't have any of that information, and I don't think they do either. I think this was you know, their, their uh, approach to attacking George. So let's listen. Okay, now, if you just have that, you might say, hey, you're nitpicking, so the wrong detective showed up. Th that isn't the main problem. The main problem is what they did when they did show up. Now, look at the assumptions when yeah. they go in. Assumption is, white guy's right, uh, who had the gun. The dead kid, who weighs 140 pounds, 17 years old, got shot in the chest, is, is wrong. So immediately, Mr. Young Turks here is saying that that the assumption is you know that the you know the cops are assuming that because the kid laying in the ground is is black he's wrong and because the guy with the gun is white he's right it, they don't bring any evidence and you'll notice this in this conversation here not a single bit of evidence suggesting there was any racism or any uh suggestion that the police acted incorrectly they don't have any evidence of that they just they just talk about it so let's continue i really haven't heard this whole thing so we're going to listen to it together the first time okay so now here comes a really bad part the detective peppered zimmerman with questions rather than allow zimmerman to tell his story questions can lead a witness the source so the source says uh the detective peppered zimmerman with questions so they're basically saying these questions was, you know, it was, it was leading George to tell him, to tell the story the way that would be best for him. So they don't have any evidence of that. I'd love to hear the questioning. Of course, that's recorded. There's, they record all these questions. So it would be wonderful to see these questions and uh, put the police department under a spotlight. But right now what we have and what we've, after all the evidence has come out, it's clear that the police were diligent. They, they did everything that was required and then some. They went beyond the call of duty to investigate this case. Nothing, no rock was left unturned that I know of. And certainly nothing that would, would prove that uh, they were not doing their job. So 
apparently they're just you know they're going after the police department they're saying they, they messed up and that this was a big thing in the beginning all about how the police department in fact that's why they um, removed the police chief was with because they had questions of his his uh, competence later on they had an issue where the the police chief tried to step down he was just trying to do the right thing he said listen there's too much hassle going on there's too much going on i'm, I'm just going to step out and let this thing handle itself well the county or the commissioner city commissioners came together and voted and said no we've looked at the case we agree with your asses assessment and we say no now of course you might have heard in the last week or so uh the new police chief or whoever it was decided that he's going to let that old police chief go oh no it was the uh wasn't the police chief it was the city manager decided to let george go or to let the uh, old police chief go and not because they found any evidence that he did anything wrong but because he felt that by having him hang in here it was making it hard on the police department to move forward that they needed to have um uh, somebody in place all right let's continue and this is someone within the police department saying hey you know what like maybe you might want to answer this way like that might help your self-defense case now we're not saying that they went that far but it's not the right way to approach it and again you might be thinking well you don't know that it was just an honest mistake or they did it on purpose to help them right well the last piece of the puzzle i think helps solve that Another officer corrected a witness after she told him she heard the teen cry for help. The officer told the witness, a longtime teacher, it was Zimmerman who cried for help, said the witness. Well, yeah, because that's what happened. The police officer told the witness it was Zimmerman crying for help, and all the evidence proved that. In fact, the police said that based on the witness's statements. Remember, John was, what, 10, 20 feet from, the, from where the actual uh, assault was taking place? Remember that? And uh, George saw him and said, hey, help me. And, and jo John's obviously fearing. It looks like a terrible fight, and he's not going to get in the middle of it. He said, I'll call 911. George says, no, I need you now. No. John's not getting in the middle of it, so John took off to uh, call the cops. So when the police come and they question John, John says um, Trevon was on top bashing George, beating his face in, breaking his nose. He's, he said, raining down, how was it? Raining down blows MMA style, something like that. So he also heard the crying and the and the helps the screams for help and he said they were coming from George so of course the police officer is going to suggest that because that's what the witnesses were saying there was no witnesses saying that Trevon was crying out for help there wasn't a single witness not one the only witness we have that suggested Trevon was the one crying was witness number five the blonde and uh, I've made a video about her. If you go to my videos, just click on the the little button above the the, the uh, video here that says videos and my videos and scroll down to the one. You'll see the picture of her and watch me tear apart her testimony. So she's the only one and and she's out. You know, she's completely out of control. So let's go to the Let's go on. That's it. There it is. And to me, that was exactly indicative of what's wrong with the police in this entire investigation. They come in, they're like, okay, the white guy who shot the poor kid, well, he must be, uh, to have a squeaky clean record. Uh, and who cried for help? Oh, the witness is telling me the kid cried for help before he got shot. Because the, Zimmerman's whole defense is, he was, I was under attack. Now, he's the one that called 911. 911 told him, do not pursue him. And by, by the way, we don't even know if he's suspicious. Zimmerman made up that he was suspicious. Turns out, of course, he wasn't suspicious. The only reason Zimmerman thought that, apparently, is because he's black, right? He wasn't armed. He had Skittles in his pocket. Nothing wrong. He was going to his dad's place. All right. So, you know, immediately, 
after this, and now the Turks have the whole thing. He's He's got it all down. He knows exactly what happened. And he keeps bringing up the color of Trevon as if that matters. He keeps bringing up Skittles. This is all part of the emotional ploy that uh, the media and the race baiters and the gun grabbers have been using. So, you know, when we listen to him, we know. I mean, just listen to him. Look at his face. Look at his expressions. He is frustrated. He's irritated. And it has nothing to do with this kid because hundreds of kids are killed every day. It's the fact that this kid, this one, was killed by a, a white man and and because the media decided to make this a case to bring down uh, gun laws. They, they don't like stand your ground laws. I don't know if he's going to talk about it, but I would guess that he that 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 will come up. Something will come up about gun laws because this guy hates American gun laws. He hates them. So now the cop comes and tells the witness, no, no, no. No, no, you didn't hear the kid ask for help. You heard Zimmerman ask for help. No, end of this. That's it. No, the cops, at least some of them in this investigation, and I don't care if people are, aren't willing to say it. My job is to say the obvious. They're racist. If it was the role reversals we've said all along. So there he is. If you disagree with him, you're a racist. Just straight out. You're a racist. Because, Why? Because the kid was black and the man with the gun was white. So that is why you're a racist. If, if, the, if the kid was white and the man was white, there would be no issue with racism. But this man, I mean, look at his eyes. Does he look like he is uh, speaking from logic or emotion? He looks totally emotional to me. You think, I mean, come on, look at all this stuff. If a black teenager had shot a 28-year-old white guy, do you think the cop comes in his automatic assumption is, uh, the teenager is uh, squeaky clean, and, and it must have been... Now, the cops never made any such assumption right away. I mean, do you think that if they assumed George was the good guy and Trevon was the bad guy, that they would put George in handcuffs right away and take his gun away? And take him down, put him in a police car, and take him down to the police department and question him thoroughly. I wouldn't think so, but you know, apparently this guy does. Uh, him that was crying for help, rather than the white guy who's got the bullet hole in his chest. No way they make that assumption. No way they lead the witness. Do you see the emotion coming out of this guy? How can you possibly think logically when you are so emotionally wrapped up? You know, I am, I, I sometimes find myself uh, quite upset with some of the things that I hear. But it doesn't, uh, I don't allow myself to get emotional. I don't allow myself to get angry. I know that uh, things work the way they work, and there's not much I can do about it. I can make these videos. I certainly don't think that it's going to make any difference in this case. All right, let's go on. Why do they make that assumption? No way they leave the witnesses in that way. Come on, bounds of reason. And this is way, way outside the bounds of reason. Now, the state has taken over the case. They have. And I think that we should. Okay, he says the state has taken over the case. That's an exactly the truth. The DA's office, after getting all the evidence from the, uh, the police department, and after doing their personal investigation, their private investigation that they normally do, because remember, the DA's office is the one that makes a decision on whether a case goes forward or not. Because the DA is the one that has to uh, to do the footwork and the legwork. They're, they look at a case and they say, uh, you know, the state of Florida has X dollars to spend on prosecuting people for things. So they come to a conclusion when they when they look at a case, they say, we can't get a conviction on this case and since we can't get a conviction we're not going to spend the money and the effort and bring all these people to trial knowing that it's it's a wasted case so when the DA looked at this case it was not only that they couldn't make the case it was even bigger than that 
they came to the conclusion that this was clearly a stand your ground case and they refused to arrest George. So that's why we had this this big outcry from the uh, the left wing, from mostly Democrats and gun grabbers and race baiters, which are mainly Democrats. So they uh, this whole thing came to a head, and it certainly wasn't because Trevon was black and George was white. It was because they needed this case for racism. They this is an election year, and we, uh, we all know that, uh, that Obama is in dire straits. He's not, you know, he's going to have to pull some real strings to get that support that he had back in 08. I mean, he was like the uh, black messiah back then. People were, were just flocking all over him. Right now, he's having a hard time drawing a crowd. Uh, who wants to go see him? He, he's a boring guy. Even the people that supported him back in the day have have come to a conclusion that he's not on their side, or if he is on their side, he's certainly hiding it very well. I mean, if I were a liberal, I'd be pissed. Think about it. I mean, he made all these promises. We're going to get out of uh, Iraq. We're going to get out of Guantanamo Bay. We're going we're gonna to stop all these illegal wars. He just increased them all. And he finally got out of Iraq because... Ron Paul and his supporters put so much pressure on him and was and what was funny is so many Democrats were moving over to the Republican side just so that they could vote for Ron Paul in the primaries and this really upset uh, Obama Obama was thinking he was going to get all that support again and suddenly all his supporters were jumping on the Ron Paul bandwagon this, you know, it's it just can't be a good thing. So he's not going to allow that. Let's continue. You can also call for a federal investigation. You remember the Rodney King uh, cops eventually went to a federal uh, investigation because civil rights are involved. Civil rights here are involved as well because apparently the local police have very questionable racial motivations. So he's saying that they want, you know, the the... Just like in the Rodney King case, the, uh, the Justice Department would love to step into this case. They see this as a racial case, as something that, that the federal government has a, a, a foot in. They're allowed to, to uh, deal with these cases when it, when it has to do with civil rights. And they're trying to suggest that uh, Trevon was denied his civil rights. There was some sort of racism going on. And, uh, you know, of course, now all that's been blown away. There's absolutely no evidence of racism. In fact, the word uh, where they, they said he used the word coon, well, they, they used high, highly technical equipment to remove all sounds outside of voice. So they have the computers can do this now. They can find the sounds that are voice. They can separate it from wind, from clothes rustle, rustling, from all other noises so it was real clear it, the word was punks and not coons that's why they dropped that part if they didn't drop it if they didn't if they couldn't prove what it what it was you think that they wouldn't still be talking about it in the in racial terms of course this is it's they've already dropped it that part is over there is no racial concerns anymore but you can see I mean, just look at this guy's face. Look at his eyes. He is on fire. He is so excited. He, I don't think he's a racist, and I don't think he's interested in the race issue. I think that it's just a side issue. For him, if you listen to him, and I've watched a lot of his other videos, he's, and I don't understand how he can be a Ron Paul supporter when he's so anti-gun, because Ron Paul is pro-Constitution and pro-freedom of individuals and totally against the state and the power of the state to uh, control people and individuals. But this guy is really anti-gun. And if he can use racism as a way to further his anti-gun opinions, so be it. And really, I don't care. You know, he's free to think what he wants. He's got his little show here. He's obviously more popular than I am. 
and I don't care. It's wonderful. I just wanted to point out that uh, these media uh, talking heads are emotional. They're they're uh, without facts, and they're willing to to incite riots, incite uh, violence against an individual who has not been proven guilty. Let's continue before I get off on a tangent again. So, uh, whether it's the state or the federal level, we've got to have some degree of justice here. It's been two and a half weeks. They still haven't charged Zimmerman. I know. It's outrageous. They have not released any evidence uh, leading to self-defense. They haven't released any evidence because that's the way the system works. First thing they do is they investigate. During the investigation, the all of the facts of that investigation should be under wraps. And as far as I'm concerned, anyone that leaks that information should be tried. I personally believe, you know, if you if if you ask my opinion, and nobody cares about my opinion, but I'm going to go ahead and give it anyhow. My opinion is that if the media talks about a trial before there's before there has been a conviction that's a problem but what's really a problem is where they they lend credence to one side or the other or suggest that one side is right one and, the, and suggest the other one's not right before there has been any any you know conviction you've got to get to the conviction before you can say that guy did it that you know i mean just listen to the media just just sit down and read the paper one day about any case just pick up any particular case and notice that the entire article is one-sided it you know it depends on what kind of newspaper you happen to be reading if it's a conservative newspaper it's going to be leaning on the conservative side and they're going to probably lean in this case conservatives are leaning on Georgia's side. And the reason for that is conservatives believe that everyone has a right to defend themselves. That's a constitutional right. The, uh, the liberals, on the other hand, believe that uh, every teenager has the right to bash somebody's head against the concrete if that teenager feels that he's being followed. So, you know, of course it's constitutional issues, and I'm... Uh, as farly, I'm as far to the right, conservative, conservatively speaking, as as I can go. In fact, I probably touch the left. I go so far over. But uh, you know, that's why I'm a Ron Paul supporter. I agree with a lot of liberals on a lot of the issues that concern our our freedoms. And that's why Ron Paul was so scary. It really was making all these people fret because the left and the right, the fringes, of course, of the left and the right were coming together. You know, we've always had the center come together and we say these people are, um, are centrist. They're, they're middle of the rotors. Well, guess what? Maybe if the left and the right came together, we could be... Uh, outside the middle of the rotors and we could be in charge you know there is no reason why we always have to agree to go to war I mean the far left and the far right agree that war is a bad idea and using war for the the reasons we use it today bad idea so let's continue and maybe uh, the young Turks can lead us to some sort of truth rather than all their their emotions in fact the police chief has said over and over again not that he has evidence of self-defense earlier he said we just don't have any evidence to say that it's not self-defense and by the way when black people shoot white people in this country the cops always assume that they're innocent and say well we don't have any evidence that it wasn't self-defense so probably the black guy was right in shooting the white guy and killing him that's always what happens in this country right that's always the assumption so many incredibly questionable assumptions so he's he, you know again he's bringing in the race he's saying oh well obviously if it were a, a black man shooting a white man of course they would let him go you know he's just being sarcastic he's suggesting that all black men go to jail no matter what if there is a white man dead on the ground and that all white men go free 
when there's a black man laying on the ground. It's just pure bullshit. I hate to say the word. It's true. Bullshit. It's bullshit. We we had a case just maybe a month after Travon where the where a black man was pulling out of a McDonald's drive through and there was this young guy walking his dog, the partially uh some sort of mental disability the kid had. He he's uh he couldn't drive, he's just, just got issues. But he you know, he wasn't a violent guy necessarily, he just had issues. So he's walking his dog and the guy in the car is going across the sidewalk as he's going leaving the the McDonald's and uh almost hits the kid and the kid gets irate and goes over to the window of the of the guy the black guy that's driving the car and starts swinging at the window and swinging at the guy trying to get at him yelling and cussing him well you know the the black guy didn't get hit he never got punched but uh he pulled out his gun and he shot this guy and killed him you know and and a lot of people at that time were saying oh my goodness it's horrible how can you kill this young guy this young guy who was mentally disabled he's walking his dog you know i'm sorry i disagree i don't care if the guy's purple he had every right to defend himself he had no way of knowing what this guy was he didn't know if this guy was a a criminal or if he was going to kill him or not, he had no way of knowing. He's trapped in his car. And this guy is standing outside his car, menacing him and giving him, uh, putting the fear of death in his in his face. So that man was right to defend himself, even if it was a little, I mean, he maybe he could have backed off. Maybe he could have drove off. I don't know the entire case, but I know that he walked away. I know that he wasn't uh, charged with murder. So I'm sorry, Mr. Ch- Mr. Young Turks, but uh, wrong. It's not, it's just not true. And your assumption is that all policemen and, and all of America basically is racist gun nuts. We love our guns and we love to shoot people and kill people. And if we do kill somebody who happens to be black, we don't have to worry about it. You know? I'm sorry, but uh, you lose me as a as a viewer when you talk like this. I mean, you had me going there for a while, but now you've really lost me. And I don't know if I'll come back, but let's listen to the rest of this. By the cops here, at the very least, Zimmerman is nearly 240 minutes, okay? Yes. Now, I, I know I'm slightly obsessed about the weight topic. He's wrong about the weight and, you know, just by looking at the election, at the uh, pictures where George is going in the police department, it's obvious he's nowhere near that weight. But because I'm near that weight, and so I. Yeah, I can imagine you are huge compared to, to George. Absolutely. I have a perspective on this. If a 17-year-old kid that weighs 140 pounds comes up to me. I think the police report said Trevon was 160, but regardless, if you've got a a 140 pound or a 160 pound guy on top of you it really doesn't matter how heavy you are the uh, the weight the weight that that you that you have is actually being used against you if you're on your back and you weigh 300 pounds 500 pounds getting up is a bitch so don't tell me that it's an advantage to be heavy. It's not. A young guy, a young, nimble, tall, thin guy can work his way around a big guy and beat the crap out of him. And I've seen it happen at least a dozen times in my childhood as I was growing up. Tall, lanky guys beat the crap out of big, fat guys all the time. It happens. So, you know, why don't you do a little search on YouTube, Mr. Young Turks, and, and take a look at some of the fights that go on. I mean, I've seen, I've seen little guys, little tiny guys in school. There was one video of this little kid. He's probably, uh, oh, maybe uh, 12, 13 years old. And this 15-year-old that's probably twice his weight is just giving him a hard time. He goes off, and he beats the crap out of that big kid. So, you know, and there are at least a dozen uh, videos here that you can find like that. 
is inconceivable that kid is a threat. In frickin' conceivable. Unless he's the most amazing jujitsu master of all time, okay? All you gotta do is push him down, right? Ha! Uh, ha! Uh, I dare you to try that with one of these kids that have been doing MMA fighting for a while. I dare you. I don't care that you're 240 pounds. I can guarantee you that I could take a kid that was Trevon's size and he'd beat the living shit right out of you. Right out of you. And not only that, if he's got your head on the concrete, you're dead if he wants you to be dead. If he makes the decision that you're dying tonight and he's got your head on the concrete, night, 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 night. You have a hundred pound advantage on him. This bitch Zimmerman, okay, sees the, uh, the black kid and thinks, did he call Mr. Zimmerman a bitch? Is that emotional? Well, I'll let you decide for yourself. But if you just take a look at the picture, look at his face. Now, you know, maybe he's angry. Maybe he's upset. Maybe he's mad because he's been so misinformed and he really believes all this misinformation. That's the only thing I can assume because the guy was really on the ball when it came to all these other issues i mean type in the search here type in a search for young turks ron paul and you'll see what i mean the guy just all the way through he's right on the money with with uh freedoms for some reason he he falls off the wagon when it comes to guns oh my god oh my god i i know it. he's a danger calls 911 pursues him the kid says, hey, from what we can tell, from what we know, the witnesses and what the cops have said, the kid says, why are you following me? He's freaked out by this weirdo following him, right? right. He's inside a gated community. He's going to his dad's house. Why is this weirdo following him? Zimmerman then starts a conflict. One of the witnesses apparently hears the kid cry for help. How could you, how could Zim So here he is. He just got done yelling at the police department for telling a witness that, uh, that, George was the ones yelling for help. And now he's insisting that it was Trevon when he doesn't have any evidence of that. None. I mean, right now at this point, he's just, he's, he really doesn't have any evidence at all. He's, he's just depending on the media reports. And as we know, the media reports were totally false. Zimmerman possibly have been in enough danger to merit pulling out his gun and shooting the kid in the chest. Maybe when his, maybe at the point when he was about ready to pass out because his head was getting cracked on the, on the concrete, or maybe it was when the blood was filling up his eyes and, his, and he couldn't breathe out of his nose anymore because of, the, um, because of the broken nose, and maybe it was because Trevon was you know putting his hand over his mouth and nose and he couldn't breathe for that reason. There's just so many possibilities. But, you know, let's go on with your rant. Even if that scenario were true, which it isn't remotely true, it isn't even 1% true, he would have to be the world's biggest bitch that he was getting his ass absolutely obliterated by a kid who was 10 years his junior and 100 pounds lighter than him. And in yeah, well, Mr. Turk, look at that face. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, 10 years younger is not a negative thing. That's a positive thing. We really pretty much peak out at around 18 years old. That's when we're at our, at our really our maximum strength. And then, you know, we start going downhill. So by the time we're 28, you know, if you just, if you just think about it physically, a uh, 28-year-old guy is, you know, that has a, a, an office job and compare that to a 17-year-old guy that, that is a football player, he's into MMA, he uh, rides bikes. I mean, this kid's an athlete. Let's get, let's get honest. He's an athlete. He is, he's got to be at least twice as strong as George, at least. A panic had to shoot the kid. Really? I mean, are you that pathetically weak and ridiculous that you... He's... Now he's, this is obviously a rant, and uh, he's just going off. He's calling him pathetic, a weakling. I mean, he is really going off. 
And again, he has no evidence of the case. He's just he's just blasting away. So you know, my personal opinion is it's all about guns. And if you listen to go search all of the all of his videos that have to do with Trevon Martin, and start with the first and go all the way through. And my guess is you'll find him talking about guns and race more than he does about any other thing. Aggressively after a kid, he beats your ass so bad that you feel you got to shoot him. And that's the best case scenario, but it, that's not what happened. This guy is malicious through and through. Even if uh, the... So now he says George is malicious through and through. Does he even know what the word means? He's, he's telling us that George is uh, malicious, and of course we know malicious means uh, completely with evil intent, that, he, that he, had, he was planning on doing something really evil. That was his plan. So all this stuff that, that happened, it was all part of his evil plan. Let's continue. Kid was attacking him. You cannot use lethal force in self-defense Look, it has to be a proportional self-defense. If, if, I, if I try to push you, you know, if, if I push you or slap you, you can't pull out a gun and shoot me. If right. I pull out a gun first, you can. But that's not what happened. He didn't have a gun. He had Skittles and tea. So, of course, he's got people to agree with him on his show. And I'm looking at this Oriental guy, and I'm saying, you know what? I would bet that you're, you're agreeing with him because you're getting paid. You know? Most Oriental people are on George Zimmerman's side because they're logical. They don't usually let emotions get in their way and cloud their, their view. And uh, when you listen to the people who support um, Trevon Martin, they're highly uh, uh, emotional. They're angry. They're distraught. They're frustrated. All the things that are signs of emotion they're not thinking clearly. They, they, they haven't sat down with all the facts and, and poured over them and listened to all the witnesses. And as a honest person, whenever you go over these, these things, like when I'm going over a witness and I'm listening to them, in my mind, I'm really trying to be as fair as possible for, the, for that person, for that witness. I'm, every time they say something and it jumps in my head and I immediately want to attack their, their opinion, I immediately try to put myself in their shoes and say, you know, what were they seeing? How were, how were they feeling at the time? What was going on? How was it, you know? And I did that with witness number five. I tried to picture myself in her shoes, what, what she was going through, how she felt, and uh, I just, you know, at the end, I, I had to come to the conclusion that she was, she was wrong. And that she was uh, adding and changing things to go along with her belief. And that's what I said in the video. But let me go on. This thing's almost done. And I'm getting really long with this video. What he's saying is, is very true. It makes the police uh, position on this completely and utterly untenable. Because... If you get pushed by someone, you're not allowed to shoot them in the head. Right. It's, that is not self-defense. Self-defense has to be proportional. Exactly right, Mr. P Turk. And I'm so glad that you brought that up. Um, I don't have a lot of time to continue making this video because I don't want to upset uh, the flexican with my long videos. But I did want to say that he's exactly right. George... Um, cannot use lethal force when lethal force is not being used against him. In other words, if someone comes up to you and smacks you across your cheek and calls you an asshole and turns around and walks away, you're not allowed to pull out your gun and shoot him in the back. You're not even allowed to shoot him in the front because a slap across the face isn't lethal. It's not even not even dangerous. I mean, it leave a little red mark across your face. But you, if you pull out a gun and kill somebody because they slapped you across your face, you're going to go to jail, and you're not going to get off easily. It's going to be, it's going to be some sort of a, a murder charge, or at the very minimum, a manslaughter charge. But in this case, that isn't what happened. George 
didn't get slapped. George was in fear for his life. And we know now by the lie detector test that he truly was, in, at least in his mind, in fear for his life. So when somebody has you on the ground and you can't get away, that's a very fearful thing. But uh, it's even more of a fearful thing when that person has told you, you're going to die tonight. And when that person has banged your head on the concrete with such f force that you felt your head was going to explode. When that person punched you so hard, you thought he had something in his hands that was like bricks. You know, clearly, George was in fear for his life. I can't, I can't assume that the young Turks knew at this point, because, of course, this was like two weeks after the shooting, all this evidence, we've got a ton more. So I'm, you know, I would like to assume that they didn't know all this stuff and go ahead and give them a pass. But if you listen to their newer videos, they're still on the same track. Maybe they just refuse to give up because they don't want to be caught being wrong. You know, that happens. But I, you know, I don't think so. I, I really believe that this man is hell-bent on changing gun laws and believes that America is a racist country. Even though we elected a half black president, and uh, you know, he might say, Well, yeah, with the help of a lot of black people, well, with the help of a lot of white people, you know, you know, remember, if it were just if all the black people voted for Obama and no white people did, there would not be an Obama for president. No, that wouldn't have happened. It was a huge amount of white people that voted for him under false pretenses he, he lied to get elected but let's continue so i don't move on to that uh, another topic so in order for the police to actually believe zimmerman's case that it's self-defense they had to believe that that kid with the skittles somehow presented a mortal threat to zimmerman it is inconceivable that they could have believed that so when you put all of this together how could it be inconceivable you know, we've got cracks, bust marks on the back of his skull where he'd been banged. He's got a broken nose. Blood's pouring out of his face. His eyes are blackened. He's, his, his face is totally bloody. When the, when the police arrive, he's a bloody mess. You know, they roll Trevon over. He doesn't have a mark on his face. He doesn't have a mark on his body. The only spot that he has a mark is on his fists and the chest wound. But George did nothing to him other than pull the trigger. Everything else, Trevon was doing all the aggressing, and, and we know that now. So anybody that would even make that suggestion, of course, this guy, Young Turks guy, is not going to um, allow that. He's going to insist that George is uh, an evil, malicious man who went out looking to kill some young black guy you know, and if, if the guy would have been white, he wouldn't have killed him. But since he was black, he, he, he hunted him down and shot him. No, the cops are, I mean, certainly by all the evidence that we have from the outside, it, it appears the cops are incredibly crooked and honestly incredibly racist. So that's the end of that. Uh, and that was his final point that, you know, the cops are racist. The cops are are stupid. Wonderful. I'm glad they feel that way. And uh, now that we know all the facts, we know he was just full of shit. And still is. And so is the rest of the media. Of course, the rest of the media has shut up because they're looking at big lawsuits. I mean, once George is acquitted or released on Stand Your Ground... I don't know what his plans are, but if I were him, I can guarantee you every one of the media outlets that that lied about him, if it were me, I would sue them. And I wouldn't stop suing them until I got their last penny. I mean, I would sue every single, I would go through every video clip, I would go through every single piece of evidence I could find that they were involved in this thing, and I would make sure that this doesn't happen again. Not because I want to make 
millions or billions of dollars for myself and share it around with other people, although that wouldn't be a bad idea. But because I don't think this should ever happen again, and I think the media should pay the price. Obviously, they didn't learn from past experiences with the with the uh, lacrosse players and uh, the guy that they suggested um, set off a bomb back in uh, Atlanta during the Olympics. You know, these are the kind of things where they just destroy a person's uh, life, completely destroy it, and then at the end go, oops, and walk away. I don't think so. Sue their ass. And George, if you're listening, I doubt you are. You're probably sitting in jail somewhere. But if you are, or your lawyer, I hope that you don't even talk about a plea agreement. Don't even talk about it. These guys have nothing. And I can guarantee you there's not a jury in the state of Florida or in the United States that would convict you. I mean, sure, they could get a handful of racist people that think you're guilty. But I can guarantee you in every case there's going to be at least one honest, good person who's going to look at the facts and refuse to be pushed. Someone like me. And uh, yeah, that's all it takes. One person on a jury, and it's a dead case. Sure, they can keep bringing it up all they want. But without a, without a, uh, a unanimous jury, it's done. So, George, don't let them do it to you. And if this lawyer continues this crap, I would suggest you dump his ass. Find somebody else. He should have given you the information you needed. Your wife should not have been arrested. He should have known that this whole thing was coming down. He obviously knew there was money in a PayPal account, and it was his duty to make sure that all the facts were brought to the judge. Certainly wasn't your duty. You don't, you're not a lawyer. You don't know the facts. He does. I blame him. And right now, the way he's doing things, I really have some questions about him. I'm not going to go into that, though. It's getting too long. I don't want to upset the flexican. Bye.